Oh I God. sat on my cape and I couldn't get it to move. <laughs> <laughs> it's all live, folks, as it happens. <laughs> How are you doing, my friend, Whimsy? <laughs> and I heard you wanted to uh, do this opening. I got very excited because I love that nightgown. You know something? <clears throat> my motivation was very simple. You said do a costume. And I thought, what the hell do I have available? And I thought, I have a phantom mask. I have a cape. I have this wonderful black fedora and I lost it. So I'm wearing this right now, but. You oh know. my God. Well, it's good to see you. Thank you for being here. And thank you to all of you for hanging out to our haunted Halloween party. You know, a lot is going on. I got to mute you here. Okay. There we go. Okay. okay. Now we can talk. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> I had to mute, mute it over there so I could. Okay. There we go. I want to make sure I can see everybody's comments. Sometimes, you know, it's not so easy. So how's your week been? Talk to us. Oh, my God. I have been busy. My manager, Debbie, has really been pushing my ass, but in good ways. And as I was saying to you earlier before we started the show, I'm just having the time of my life right now. And I always thank you for it. The, this opportunity has just been fabulous. You know, I can't believe we've only been doing this. I've been doing this just over three months now. Has it? Oh, uh, for some reason, I can't see the chat. I don't know what's going on. Um, uh, oh, just, live just, chat yeah. is visible. Is the live chat busy? Let me say hello. Uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, I see it here. Um, I see me saying hello. I don't know why I'm not seeing the live chat. You're saying hello to us. And I've got an LOL laughing out loud. Happy Halloween, Chuck and Whimsy. Hello. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are finding our way in the world, as they say. Yes, uh, it looks like it's two people are watching. Two people are watching. Two people are watching right now? Oh, I'm yes. sure it's more than that. <laughs> uh, I have no idea what the heck's going on. And I, for whatever reason, I can't see the... Uh, the yeah. Well, um, uh, I have no I, idea what's going on. No, I see messages yeah, here. I see lots of hellos. People let us know you're out there. So Whimsy will know we have more than two people watching. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so what? If we have two people, we're just going to do a full out show for those two people. But I'm sure it's more. Uh, I think I'm just seeing things really well. So what did you do with your week? I, you know, we've got a lot to talk about. First off, if people could like and subscribe, uh, find the stream, settle down, make yourself comfortable all yeah. the chit chat uh my feed tells me there's 123 people here yeah, in the I saw that myself you know so uh, uh, yeah, uh, i good. don't i don't think we need to oh there they go for whatever reason it wasn't showing uh, now i see everybody hello melody Harmon, christine brooks <laughs> connie morris john <laughs> Lever, Kate travel to row a dear friend <laughs> I see everybody now. So yeah, I do um, before we get started, uh, you know, uh, we have a busy show. We have got some ghost stories. Uh, Chuck and I are going to show you the film footage of the ghost that uh, that we have we have made contact with some of the celebrities over at the Hollywood. Uh, we held on to that film footage, didn't we? Yes, sir? we did. Yes, we did. We did that during the middle of the hot August summer. Right. And the Hollywood Forever Cemetery is haunted. And furthermore, did you know that they have a really hard time keeping uh, employees because of that? I never heard that before. Well, I guess it's the, specifically the night uh, security. Oh my complaints. God. <laughs> and they have specifically made complaints about the vaults being the area that we were in is God. very haunted. And uh, so we got a taste of that, didn't we? Yes, we did. Well, you know, something I can share with you very quickly, you know, because I've worked on a series of videos for my own channel and I stood in front of the Paramount Studios. And in my research, you know, the Param Paramount, their back mm -hmm. wall adjoins Hollywood Forever Cemetery. So night guards at Paramount see all kinds of spooky stuff going on there. So it's interesting you said it about night employees. Yeah, so uh, several of the night employees, because people thought it was a joke, maybe people are playing practical jokes. No, this is these folks over at Hollywood Forever, it's not a joke, it's not a game. They're not faking it. No. So uh, they have they been have built... Oh. 
Did somebody else have another one? Um, but yeah. they're filming this stuff. Yeah. So, uh, is this on? No, that's muted. Yeah. Make sure everything's muted. But yeah. um, so, what happened when you were you and I were there was yeah. we had some visitors, right? Oh yes. They started playing. Oh, with oh yes. Uh, they started playing with the electrical and all that crazy stuff. So yeah. people are going to start seeing the phenomenon that the people at Hollywood that the uh, night guards have been complaining about it started to happen to us. It sure uh, did. So we were very started, yes, and uh, I and I also had a bag disappear. Uh, oh, uh, that's the no, other. Bag, no, but I I threw it in the trash. I, we were I was cleaning up trash. I got overheated. I threw my bag, but that's yeah. okay. It, it, we freaked out. I took it out. Oh, we end, freaked it was, out. <laughs> it was no big deal in the end, right? It was in the end, end, yeah. I mean, but, it, oh, there was no equipment. It was just a bag yeah. with my passport, but that's okay. Yeah. And at the time, we didn't know if there was equipment in there or not. We didn't know what you had lost. And yeah, we had, so I took it out on Chuck. But uh, yeah, it was a <laughs> it was a bizarre okay, shoot. You. you know it's what I think? Uh, let's go ahead. We'll do the empaths prayer, and then we'll uh, get busy. We've got a ton of blitzes. People want to talk yeah. about a ton of stuff. Uh, Matthew Perry's passing. We will definitely talk about that along with uh, some other celebrity gossip. We also are going to have later on in the show, Heather Hardison. Uh, she is the author of The Call of the Cards. It is a trilogy. Chuck and I have read it. I'm actually about two thirds of the way down, done. So if you have read to the ending, we do have a policy here for the book club. We've had requests and complaints uh, mm -hmm. not to give the endings away because we do understand that not everybody in the book club uh, finishes the book by the time we get together. So we understand that. So no giving away plots, like too, you general plot, yes, but don't give away the uh, endings or anything like exactly. that. We just kind of have a rule about that. Yeah. I know Oprah has the same rule where she will oh, yeah. get really close and then they will have stuff because why buy the book if you know the whole story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Folks, if I'm blinking weird out of the side, it's this mask. It's causing my contact lens to slip. But anyway, I'm okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> I actually, uh, you can go, I think that the performance, you can go ahead and take that mask. You don't have to keep the mask on. Do you want to keep the mask on? No. <laughs> Truthfully, I'm more comfortable without it. As much as I aesthetically like wearing this, it is, it cuts into my nose. It's causing my contact lens to slip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, what do you think of my, uh, Christy, what do you think of my nightgown? This was what I had to come up with. Whoa. Uh, I think I, you, you have know, that Victorian thing going on. You know? I went to all the used clothing stores. I could not find a uh, 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 Maybe there were other uh, people out there doing Phantom of the Opera. I don't know. I, so I just said, what the hell? I'm going to put my PJs on. I ordered this cape off of Amazon. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, you could have just used a uh, garbage bag, I think. Nobody would have known. <laughs> Probably so. But hey, every guy needs a black cape and you're on their own. <laughs> oh. All right, <laughs> let's gather together. I think I think everyone is here. Let's go ahead. We've got 157 beautiful souls here ready to get spooky. With We do have some spooky stuff to talk about too today. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's do the empath's prayer. Okay. Okay. I want to call on white light protection for myself and this community as we ask permission from spirit to access the Akashic records. We call on our spirit guides and our good angels to be with us. Please give us the clarity and the wisdom that is needed to empower all of us on our journeys to make the best decisions for ourselves, our families, the planet, the people we love, but also to help those that we may have strife with. And together collectively as a community, we say, Amen. Amen. Amen, everyone. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's just start with the basics here, honey. I see something very spooky and strange over there on your left. Do you want to clarify that for me? me? What do you mean the work here? Is this what you're talking to about, or do you just see something spooky? <laughs> yes, yes I, I see. Gr I see a lot of green. Uh, explain. Yeah. Okay. I know we have a big show today, so I won't belabor this. But this is my portrait of Endora versus the Wicked Witch of the West. In my uh, opinion, yeah. the two greatest witches of all time. And I won't belabor this, other than it's watercolor and color pencil. I this was a piece I did for fun. 
And frankly, in an altercation between these two, I think we know who would win. Uh, uh, you, oh, really? Do you think Nora. so? Yeah, oh, you, you cross the door out. That does not turn out well. <laughs> so anyway, that's that. Uh huh. Okay, so a couple questions now about the piece. We do have a little time, actually. Um, okay. When did you do the piece? That's my first question. I did this maybe sometime this summer. It was, you know, I always have a list of fantasy projects I want to do when I want to just do things for fun for myself. I had always wanted to put Endora and the Wicked Witch together because <laughs> I uh -huh. think they're so over the top and so much fun. Okay. Yeah. And is this available? Are the prints available for purchase? Is the original uh, available for purchase? Prints and uh, the original I can sell also. Okay. If a person would like to purchase your work, they can go to chuckdransfield.com or yes. if they need to commission or if they're confused about anything, another thing you can do is just contact your agent, your manager, uh, Debbie yeah. Brady, and she uh -huh. does work out things like contracts for large uh, jobs, sure. things of that nature. Yeah. And I can also uh, be reached dransfieldchuck at gmail.com as well. Yeah. I have another uh, question for that. Like, uh, sure. first off, I love it. You know, I never did see much of the green. Maybe I'm missing it, but I look at the Wicked Witch in the movie, and she doesn't look that green to me for some reason. Oh, trust me. If you ever have the good fortune to see a true technicolor print of the Wizard of Oz in a movie theater, it, it is astounding how vibrant the colors are. Uh, Margaret okay. Hamilton had to be painted practically head to toe in a green copper-based makeup. And there was a story, you know, that scene in the beginning when the witch first appears and she disappears in that big fireball. Right, right, right. Margaret Hamilton got seriously burned. She had third degree burns. Are you serious? And, yes. And the makeup artist had to run with cotton and alcohol and start dabbing the makeup off of her real fast because the makeup was so toxic. And he, he was afraid it was going to get into her skin. And the poor woman was screaming in agony because he was patting her down with alcohol on her freshly burned skin. But he had to do it. And she had to leave the production for five weeks to heal. Are you? He, oh, my God. I yes. take it that was before the Screen Actors Guild. Oh, yes. And let me tell you something else. The studio did not even offer to give her a, a ride home. That She had to drive herself home burned had to take five weeks off from production and she was scared to death to complain about it because she thought she would get blacklisted in the industry, you know, for being a troublemaker. So she had to just gracefully take it, wait it out, heal up, and then report back to work. She's told that story a number of times, but you know, Margaret Hamilton in her later years, we, she was a very sweet, sweet woman. She was a kindergarten teacher before she was an actress. So wow. she loved children, she was very warm. In real life, she and Judy Garland had a great friendship. They they were very nurturing to each other during the making of the movie. And yet they had to play Dorothy and the Witch. Uh, but then, uh, Margaret Hamilton, sorry about that. My apologies. They know you do sorry. Taco Tuesday. Oh, I but, thought the uh, whole world that, knew yeah, I know. everybody not to call me. But anyway, Margaret Hamilton used to appear in like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and Sesame Street. Right. Because it always stressed her that children were so afraid of her. And that, that was the last thing in the world she wanted. So she wanted to just say to children, this was just a character I played in a movie. And that's all. Yeah, I think I remember anyway. something about her having a daughter at the time, a small child, and the, her daughter was afraid of her. No, she had a little boy. Oh, you're thinking of Judy Garland. Judy Garland's two daughters, Lorna and Liza, uh -huh. watched the of Oz. Judy was away on a concert tour, so they were, I think a nanny was taking care of them. They oh. had never seen The Wizard of Oz before. And so Judy said, oh, of course, let them watch it. And the two little girls were traumatized and crying hysterically when they saw their mother being carried away by the flying monkeys and the witch going after her. And the nanny had to get Judy on the phone to console them and say, kids, it's just a movie. It's just a movie. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my so gosh. That's the story. But, the, you know, on YouTube, there's her appearance on uh, Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I would recommend it to anyone. It's so endearing. 
a Mr. Rogers neighborhood, Margaret Hamilton, she pierces herself, the sweet little old grandmotherly lady, and she has a suitcase and she has a witch's costume in there with the hat and everything. And she puts it on in front of everybody so the children can see it's all make-believe. Even when she turns around for Mr. Rogers to zip her up, Mr. Rogers goes, look, boys and girls, even witches have zippers. <laughs> he pulls up the zipper, you know. Oh, yeah. wow, that's so cool. Yeah, it's so much fun. Wow, yeah. you got to admit, there's something really remarkable and special about actors, you know, yes. as people and uh, communicators. Speaking of which, I think we just got to go into it, folks. Yes. The cast of Friends coming together again to grieve the sudden loss of their beloved Matthew Perry and issue a joint statement. We were more than just castmates. We are a family. Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc, and David Schwimmer are writing. There is so much to say, but right now we're going to take a moment to grieve and process this unfathomable loss. The 54-year-old actor was found unresponsive in a hot tub Saturday afternoon at his Pacific Palisades home. Sources familiar telling NBC News that Perry's assistant had left to run an errand and returned to find Perry unresponsive and called 911. The Los Angeles Fire Department said that firefighters removed Perry from the hot tub, but that he was already dead when they arrived. I'm not great at the advice. Yeah. Oh, wow. it's just so tragic. Yeah. You know, um, you know you know something whimsy as tragic as this was and as much as i was rooting for the guy his death didn't surprise me you want to talk you know about from that? all that I, heard, I don't know if you saw the interviews when he did his autobiography last year the tales of his struggles uh he, the man should have died several times over from his accounts from from all the overdoses and uh what was it? I'm paraphrasing this, but I think at one point he was taking like between 75 and 150 pills a day at one point. Wow. And he told stories of how he would go to open houses, you know, real estate open houses, just so he could go into the bathrooms and go through the medicine cabinets to find what pills they had and what he could steal. And he would figure, well, nobody's going to think Chandler Bing is going to steal medication, you know, so he knew he could get away with it. But, he, you know, his addiction was so serious. That's what he had resorted to. Wow. Well, you know, also, you know, they're saying that no drugs, though, were found in the home. No alcohol right. was found in the home. The, ho the home was clean as a whistle. So that brings up the question of if the home was clean as a whistle, is this heat stroke or a heart attack because of years of abuse? Yeah. You know, that well, that's what I think also, you know, you and I discussed that earlier. You know, I, I think he had abused his body so much. He was he was a 54 year old man. His, I'm sure his heart was weakened, his cardiovascular system. Uh, he was in a hot tub. I have known people who have stayed too long in a sauna or a hot tub and passed out. You know, so I think it was just some unfortunate circumstances. I really enjoyed uh, reading about his life and about how he had healed himself. And one of the ways that he had healed himself was with uh, pickleball. I, I, I mean, I know a lot of people, they get really addicted to pickleball, but he, yeah. instead of going and getting high, he would go and play pickleball. Yeah. And uh, he played pickleball like five times a week. Yeah, whatever whatever it takes, anything healthy, anything constructive, it's a substitute. So I'm glad he well, had that. This is something important that Geoplasmic Valentine mentions, which is that we will, uh, somebody had gotten angry at me for giving an opinion about Matthew Perry the other day. Just shut up and read. Don't give your opinion. Just shut up and read. be a psychic. Cause I had said we should not assume it was drugs. In defense of the person who's now blocked and no longer able to comment on my panel, um, yeah. I don't think they knew I was a doctor. I think, you know, it's a weird thing to have somebody doing this goofy show and find out that they're an actual physician. So what happens yeah. a lot of the time is that people will just ask my opinion. What do you think, doc? And so I'll, I'll give an opinion as a doctor and people, I think that kind of takes people back because they think, well, you're just a parole reader. They don't realize that I'm a doctor that Highly qualified. That Linda, that you're a physician's assistant, that Linda G is a nurse of 30 years or whatever. So 
we have lives outside of this hobby or this fun thing we do. But um, my point was to not assume that his death was an overdose. Exactly. If somebody is telling you they're clean and sober and they're uh, sponsoring people and they're doing all these positive things, we can't, we should not, I'm not going to be the person to use this platform to start uh, spreading rumors when the evidence is not supporting that. And then an answer, the other thing I want to say as a physician, just as a doctor, yes, we do prescribe antidepressants and anti-anxiety so that the person is not triggered to use. And that's completely okay. And there's nothing wrong with that. And it's something right. that's very common that we will prescribe to addicts because a very large percentage of addicts suffer from shame, guilt, depression, et cetera. Which, yeah. And those negative emotions can trigger you to re, uh, reuse. It sounds to me like this individual might have been on anti-anxiety medications, got sleep, yes. fell asleep, or had a stroke. Right, That's not right. the same as being a person using drugs and uh, uh, getting high. That's a exactly. fortunate event of somebody in their 50s. And I think it's tragic, but and I think that's probably what we're looking at. You know, something whimsy, you know, when I, you know, I was in the nutritional field, yes. as you yeah, were. That's we why were. I hired you. <laughs> well, anyway, I would routinely, you know, being Los Angeles, have people coming in precisely for what you spoke of. Right. You know, because as you know, there are a lot of natural antidepressants. It was a large space of our patients yeah. that we treated, that you and I treated, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, for example, the amino acid tyrosine, I would have uh, sometimes recovering addicts use that or right. uh, glutamate, just anything to help lift the spirits, the mood, to help get over that edge. So, you know, I was I was aware of that also just from that before I even knew you. Yeah. So right. I don't want people to be, oh, well, he was on gabapentin, which is also uh, it's OK if his doctor prescribed uh, yes. an anti-anxiety yeah. or something to help him sleep. It's completely you know. appropriate. It's, it's not. We don't want to yeah. go shaming somebody or you did something wrong when you chose to be on anti-anxiety medications to deal with years of struggling with addiction. I think it's, yeah. we have to like make that distinction. Exactly. You know, if I may add, because I have personally known recovering addicts, recovering alcoholics, right. and they are some of the bravest people I've ever known in my life mm. because everyone tells me, you know, it's not like you're just cured. You're never cured. You're always recovering. And that by that, it's like a day to day thing. Some will say it's a minute by, by minute, hour by hour thing. You're constantly addressing this. So it takes courage. Matthew Perry was a brave man. Mm -hmm. All the more reason not to judge him. Yeah. And he gets the doctor, made us happy. Right. I really like, yeah. So that he should be remembered as, first off, being honest enough to just talk about it. Yes. That took courage. Mm -hmm. That took to write that book, to do those interviews you know, being a public figure, he knew what he was putting on the line, but it's like what he's, you know, I'm paraphrasing again, but there were those quotes about his recovery center that he helped establish and oh, the wow. work he was doing. He said, he said, this is what I want to be remembered for, not Chandler Bing. He said, likely that's what I'm going to be remembered for, but I would rather it be this. I'd rather this be my mission, my purpose in life that I'd be remembered for. Yeah. Well, what, yeah. what's our audience got to say today, Chuck? He in my uh, eyes today. <laughs> well, let's see. I was mentioned here. It was a gift to us. His book, uh, thanking us for making the distinctions we made. Uh, uh, they come in here. They fight their demons every single day, and they may relapse many times before they are finally able to get clean. Yes, I agree. I've seen that personally with people I know. Um, yeah, let me see here. Oh, we're on both channels right now. I see that. Uh, we're on both comment. channels. I guess. I guess that means we're on my channel too. <laughs> uh, let me see here. I'm oh, I'm. Uh, you may have joined the uh, group streamers. I, I might. Maybe that's what I joined. It. Yeah. Oh, okay. Join, not joined. Joined. What kind of word is that? Um, and then, of course, here's some things you commented already on about on the antidepressants and anti-anxiety. As we mentioned, is you know, someone said his heart probably gave out. That's what I think. I think from all of this, just I think it was just the heat because hot tubs can be intense. 
Uh, I know sometimes I have forgotten to get out and I get very lightheaded and woozy. I don't know if you've ever had that experience. I think it's dangerous, you know, I mean, particularly as we get older, you know, and if he was taking something to help him sleep, uh, you know, you can fall asleep. It's not, um, it's, you know, I was thinking about something completely unrelated and yes, related that I thought we could talk about because of this phenomenon of people that are feel like, you know, you're feeling like you want to relax, you go to take a bath and then you drowned. Have you noticed this phenomenon Halloween? Now in the case of sometimes the person is using drugs, sometimes the person is not using drugs. Yeah. Like <laughs> obviously Whitney Houston comes to immediate mind. Yes. And her daughter. About. And her daughter. Yes. Bobby. And I forget the circumstances with her daughter. I know Whitney, of course, they found. I think she was fighting with her husband at the time, but other people can correct me. She would maybe go into the bath to have a bath. Uh, But it's... That broke my heart, Whitney Houston. She was one of my favorites. I do think certain drugs, like marijuana, for example, or certain relaxing medications, benzos, gabapentin, you think, I feel good. And for whatever reason, and and Mm -hmm. this is something I've noticed, just as a physician, I've noticed it, is that yeah. people smoke a little weed or anything that's like yeah. a benzo and they, for whatever reason, the thought comes into your mind, I think I'm going to go have a warm bath. Bad idea. Yeah. They pop some Bad. Bad. or they have a little water. I'm feeling good. I need to chill. I'm going to go have myself uh, a nice bath. Oh, you know. Immediately you go into the water. There's a psychological or a spiritual phenomenon that almost seems to happen to a certain group of people where they want to go into the nice bath right and it's almost as if they're called to it but you know in the african yoruba tradition ifa of the yoruba of nigeria this is something that you might find interesting if you die being drowned in sweet water like what's happening this phenomenon yeah we have a pretty good idea in the Yoruba tradition of who, who the deity is that rules your head. And the deity of the sweet water is Oshun, the goddess of luxury and beauty and sensuality. And she's very uh, sensitive and uh, um, it makes me think because I've studied the Yoruba tradition, oh, Matthew Perry was a child of Oshun. That makes complete sense because Oshun is a deity as a goddess. Yeah. She, her children in the spiritual tradition of African tradition of the Yoruba, they are very sensitive. Her boys are the most sensitive boys. They're the most artistic, the most creative. They want the finer things in life. They, That's perfect. They're they're uh, they're uh, they have the polished shoes, and they're often entertainers. They want to be in the spotlight. So when yeah. I heard about how he passed. I thought, oh, he's well. At least at least you know who his whose mother was in the Yoruba. Yes. So this is a child of old food. Yeah. Well, you know, he was conflicted about that because if you've read any of his autobiography or heard his life stories, all you know he like most people come to Hollywood, quote unquote Hollywood, they want fame, they want success. They think that's going to bring them happiness. It's going to be the be all end all. And he said after about eight months, it was very clear to him that was not bringing him the happiness and the fulfillment he thought. And he was very naive about that. Yeah. And then he started turning more and more to substance abuse. I guess I don't, for whatever his reasons were, his demons, but it, I thought that was intriguing about that, what you just said right now. I mean, the man was clearly born to be an entertainer. Yeah, and... He was, friends. He was just effortless. You know, the way he performed, it was just, there was a magic. There was a magic. There was a chemistry between those actors that was so rare. And sacred, you know? Yes. It's like they really trusted each other. I mean... Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, you know, when you look at the tens of thousands of television shows, it's only a small handful that ever rise to the top. You know, like I Love Lucy, Honeymooners, Seinfeld, Friends, shows like that. It's only a small handful that endure. And definitely Friends struck a nerve all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Oh. Well, um, you know, we hope that people, his memory will continue to inspire people and, you know, so, hearts go out to his family and it's exactly. terrible. It's a terrible loss. Continuing on, uh, on yes. this wild and wicked terrain that is us, um, do you think that we should talk to people about this? <laughs> Oh, there's that hat. <laughs> Look at us. I remember that day we were wiping sweat off our brow and drinking lots of water. Oh, that's very nice. You did it right at the beginning. Okay. Well, Chuck, I yeah. really have enjoyed our day. I have. Here at hotter the, than hell. Right it is now. hotter than hell. <laughs> but we're okay. It's there good. are a lot of people that are buried at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. I don't think we saw any ghosts. We're still hot on the case hot on the case and literally we uh we are case. taking our ghost hunting very seriously yeah. uh as long as we take frequent breaks for nosh snacky poos we need to have our snacky poos in water because yeah. we're like that we're those types of people and we yeah. get we get scared pretty easily i get scared well, let's talk about the fear. What was your, okay, let's let's take a moment in the documentary here. We're showing you our, our ghost documentary. We're going to be taking breaks. Okay. Uh, we, we, we were, uh, that this is the uh, hunt. And uh, as you can see, we're in full costume. Oh, yeah. Someone just mentioned you're wearing the Barbie hat. <laughs> I'm wearing, yes. And we went, actually, was that, did we go to Barbie the night before? Or I was, think we did be the first night. Remember, we had Korean barbecue, ha ha ha, and went to see Barbie. Oh my God, it was fantastic though. That food, was the wasn't the food night. excellent though? It was excellent food, but of course, lots of little nudge nudge, wink wink jokes there. But you know, you and I were just surprised how much we loved that movie. Yeah. It was fun. Oh, that was a great visit. But um, anyway, I don't want to get digress or get off track. <laughs> So what were you asking me, Wimsy? Well, um, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll uh, switch it out. We're going to go to another one pretty soon. Um, <laughs> where are we here? I will, I will uh, figure this out. Okay. Um, so we were hot on the trail. And uh, let's, let's take a look. Can you see this okay? I can see it. Well, I remember it. I don't even have against the light. Watch. We're checking our lighting. Watch what starts to happen. You see the light? Mm -hmm. We had no, the light started going yeah, crazy just, on us. Um, we went doing? into the, this is the area. Talk about, look, look. Uh, this is where they won't go in. To yeah. find the, look. Wow. So it's haunted here. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we hear. Are we sure? <laughs> That light began to flicker when we began recording. Did you see that? Yeah, I see it. Well, can you tell us a little bit about where we're at, Chuck? We are at the famous Hollywood Forever Cemetery. What? Loud. Loud. OK, I didn't want to talk too loud in here. We're at the Hollywood Forever <laughs> Cemetery, uh, where many famous now people. Now the light goes on. See how crazy it was? Silent screen stars, legends yeah. like Rudolph Valentino, Judy Garland, Mickey Rooney, Douglas Fairbanks, Norma Talmadge. And we're here today because we uh, were just seeking uh, to feel spiritual energy, see if anybody wishes to communicate. I mean, just, it, did they, they came through for us, Chuck? Yes, they did. Hey, uh, this is Hollywood, the Hollywood Cemetery. So of course we're gonna have spirits are gonna wanna make their moment on camera, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here's my moment to shine so in the, the spot. The Latino man by the garbage thing, which, by the way, I think that's where I dumped my stuff accidentally. He said that he didn't like going in there at night. Yeah. He was the guy that said that that area that we were in, people, people, people do not want to go yeah. back there. And why clean? The only reason to go that they go back there at night is because they hear giggling and talking and they think people have broken into the cemetery and that's why they keep going back here and that is what's freaking people out. Yeah. 
Well, you know, I just had a question here. Did you guys see the orb just before the lights started to flicker? No, you know, I, I didn't. I, I'm honest, I didn't. You were the one who called my attention to it because I was just focusing on the camera you were holding in front of me. Well, we when we first went in, all the lights were on. When we first went yeah. in, all the lights were on. Then the yeah. lights started busting. Then I went, when we walked out, I, and we were walking out, to the right was the janitor that was changing the garbage place. And then when I came yeah. around, and then when we left, I dumped the trash and I actually threw my bag out. Yes. That guy said he didn't like to go back there. Well, you know, I tell you, so what we went through that afternoon, I, something definitely happened. You know, even though the bag may have, not had bad consequences we didn't know that at the time you know it was you know there was it was weird energy for the rest it of the day it was just some, it, oh, oh, we we got hex man or something we sure did we sure did stories for decades about how it's haunted here a lot of ghost now stories two lights are out, out. it was all all the lights and then the lights start blowing out a flickering light yeah. behind us that seems to be telling us a message also right now. things started moving around like yes. Sarah's move, and we're I here to see Judy Garland's grave, aren't we? Yes, we are. We're going there right now. No. Yes. As someone just said, someone wanted to talk to us very much. They, they knew we had cameras. They knew we were going to get it out to the world. They they wanted. To I don't know. Did you feel that whimsy? I don't know. I know something happened. I do yeah. think because we dropped everything off. I put everything at the chair. Then when I came back, things had been moved, and that was weird. There was a lot yes. of really weird stuff that went down Oh, it was that day. It turned so strange that day. And then you and I had to get back to the hotel room because we had a 5 o'clock show to do together. Right. And it was like all loose but somehow it came together once we got on camera yeah i just um what my feeling is about the whole thing um i feel like we make that something is there do i think yeah. it's one of the people that's buried i mean like maybe not you know consider the possibility yeah. that a lot of famous people are there that gave their lives to entertain people and so a lot of people are attracted they go there to connect with those who have passed so maybe it's attracting, you know, could it be attracting uh, creepy crawlies? You know, not necessarily. Like the last guy that quit, I saw the film footage. It was because babies were, uh, there were children laughing and giggling and crying. So he went back into that back area. The, the film footage is on YouTube, by the way. That's why I wanted to go to that back area. And then, it's, then it happened to us. Then we started having weird stuff. So. Yes. Um, I don't assume that it's a, an actor or something. It could just be some weird, creepy, uh, I don't know, energy yeah. somehow associated with it. I don't know. Yeah. I have a question here, but I should let you finish what you're showing before. But somebody asked, why is Hollywood so haunted? I actually can answer that question, but should I wait and let you continue speaking, Whimsy? No, go ahead and answer that. I have another film clip because we did do... We did do an, a walkthrough where we were using um, we were we were doing uh, heat. Uh, we did the light thing, but we also yeah. oh, I, I, for whatever reason I can't find it right now. But that's okay. We didn't really capture anything. We did do a heat sensor walk. We did a but uh, you know this was we treated it like a, I think if we did anything wrong Chuck it's that we treated it like a joke a little bit and then whatever was there uh decided to treat it like it wasn't a joke because well, we had a series yeah. of bad yeah. luck after that like we treated it like it was a bad like, well, we, we had very bad luck after his that. car yeah. broke I mean, down it's like uh oh I don't think God about my radiator overheating oh God it was a nightmare so uh yeah oh. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know how you block out bad memories? I forgot my car overheated that night. We just had one thing after another go wrong that day. It was just really bad. Oh, um, which you know, is a point we both make, like when you do the impasse prayer at the beginning. And I say this to anyone who's trying to talk with the spirit world, connect, be really careful, be reverential, protect yourself, surround yourself with white light, love pray to keep lower vibrational energy entities entities away from you 
And yeah. I can't remember, did we do any prayer before we did all no. this? We should have. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, think. we didn't do anything. We went in. It was going to be fun and goofy. We did get yeah. good energy from some of the actors. I mean, I felt like Valerie yeah. Harper was energetically with us. But uh, she loved us. Yeah, you know, she was great. Was but uh, you go into, I agree, Chuck. Uh, I did not see the orb. There was, evidently there were orbs. Yeah. Um, I think the takeaway from all of this is that, you know, go have fun, go have those experiences, but also uh, be mindful that uh, yeah. it's uh, not all fun and games out there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I tell people be really careful with Ouija boards for that very reason. People treat those like a game. Right. Have you ever played with one of those? What's that? Have you ever played with a Ouija board? I did as a kid, but uh, once I started hearing about them and the true nature, I never touched one again. And I've had friends say, oh, come on, let's get a Ouija board and do this. I'm, I refuse. I will have nothing to do with it because I've always heard Ouija boards invite in dark energy and entities. Now, maybe people out there have a different opinion, but that's what I have heard. So I just never wanted to touch them. I've seen I've seen some pretty spooky stories about it. I, I mean, I, I, uh, I've I never had much success with it before. And when I do tarot readings, I do the empath's prayer because I'm, I know exactly. to do that. So maybe- well, When you're doing that, you know, you're coming from a very pure, heartfelt place, a very sacred place. I don't know if that would make a difference if people did like protective prayers before a Ouija board or not, but you certainly don't need that, mm. you know, with your natural gifts. No, you have to protect yourself. Listen, I there's a, a to switch to this is the Bigfoot thing that I wanted to show you. Uh, to just to switch gears, you know, the Patterson Bigfoot film. Uh, we're we're going to switch over to uh, Bigfoot now. Do you know about this, Chuck? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, haven't they found some solid evidence, like DNA evidence? They yes. actually got hair samples. Yes. As showing the, the validity. And Grandma's... you and I were talking about this. Oh, sorry. Um, I just, oh, no, I didn't... yeah, yeah uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, yeah, go ahead. Are, are you? Well, I'm just going to uh, say, you know, you and I talked about this. It's not impossible, Bigfoot, quote unquote, Bigfoot could be a genetic mutation of some kind, you know, because we've talked about this before on the shows, you know, how human evolution did not necessarily just go homo sapien. It branched off in different ways. I hope I'm saying that correctly. You know, no, you get it right. I mean, the reason why the Patterson uh, Bigfoot film footage has come up to debate again, we'll go ahead and show you is because a group of people have been able to improve the footage. So let's take a look and we're going to have a conversation about the new Patterson uh, film footage. Okay. It's a female. You can see breasts hanging. These are her breasts. My goodness. You see her breast? You know, the picture is so little, I don't, but the fact that you're calling attention to that, I believe you. It's a female. Yeah. A very human-like stride, though, the way she's walking. Yeah. At least that's what yeah, it like to me. bipedal. I mean, whatever this thing is, is it's bipedal. Uh it's straight up, which is interesting to me because, you know, how long have humans been completely bipedal? You, you would know better than me. The, you're the anthropologist. That's a good question. I don't know. Well, we know, oh, uh, I don't know, homo habilis maybe? Like, you know, huh? I, I always go back to like homo habilis, you know, which is pre-homo erectus that yeah. whatever this is might have split because we we've made this mistake as anthropologists we assume that all these other lines just died out oh that you went extinct you went extinct you but are we sure about that yeah we're not sure what is that you know, there, there's increased do you hear a buzzing sound um i don't i don't hear it from my end anyway oh i don't know 
could be something uh, happening. You sound fine. Yeah. Oh, you know, we've done several shows on this already, you know, about these theories. And it's interesting. They're now coming to the surface. They're now being revealed. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead um, with the time remaining. We'll do a couple of quick blitzes for people. And then uh, at six o'clock, we have the book club getting together. It's already 550. If people have a couple of blitzes they'd like us to do. Uh, and if I could throw out something quickly, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. It's been a fun show I was just so going to say, because we don't have time like for me to answer that question about why is Hollywood haunted. But if you go to my channel, I have a video precisely addressing that question. I went to downtown Hollywood and explained about the circling entities. And if I may just throw this out real quick, at 7 p.m. Uh, West Coast time, 10 o'clock East Coast time, we're having a world premiere of all my haunted Hollywood videos together on my channel. Just wanted to throw that out. Tonight at 7? <laughs> Tonight. Yeah, it was 7 West Coast, 10 o'clock East Coast. Wait time. a minute. So what's happening? Why didn't you tell me this? Well, I thought of course I, I would you. be there. God, well, th uh, yeah, tell no, me no, come no, lately here. Well, did, you, did you think that we would want to go to this shindig? Well, well, I hope so. I just want people to know, but I, I do address that very question that someone just asked. So I'll just let people go to the video. They'll all be on my channel anyway. Hi, Debbie. Good to see you. I just noticed Debbie was here. Thank you for being here, Debbie. <laughs> Um, okay, so seven o'clock, we have Haunted Hollywood with, so everyone's, we, so have your, we're going to finish with the interview at six, and then we're going to go over to you, to you at seven, we're going to have dinner, and then we're going to go over to Chuck's, and we're going to hear about, Thank I'm you. very excited about that, because Thank absolutely 100% Hollywood is haunted. Well, Thank you. Uh, I just wanted that person to know their question will be answered. Yes. So those questions and all of the spooky, well, you've got the lowdown because I think you per, they show up at your house periodically. Oh, yes. Did I tell that story? Do you want me to tell that Please. story? Oh, you come know. on. If you're going to do it, you got to do it on Halloween. Well, it was when I, you know, I write and I was writing, uh, I was working on a screenplay about Lucy and Desi and the communist Red Scare. Yes, I know about the Aaron Sorkin movie, which kind of <laughs> killed my project. But anyway, I was doing a lot. <laughs> yes, I was doing I have a no lot idea of how well he knows about that. Yeah. Anyway, I was channeling all these spirits, Lucy, Desi, people who were there. My cat at the time, Charlie, I, it was a different Siamese. Oh. He was just freaking out and started peeing on my couch. And he had never done that before. I had a psychic healer I was working with, a wonderful lady named Jennifer Norton. And she said, well, let me look into this. And I know this sounds nutty, but hey, we're all family here. Uh, she called in a cat spirit uh, like a cat angel to speak to my cat and reassure him that everything was okay he was so scared because cats are so sensitive to surrounding spirits and entities and that's why he was peeing on the couch whatever happened my cat stopped doing it he stopped peeing on the couch and he was just fine but that was going on in my apartment at that time and Jennifer, my healer, said, well, your apartment's like Grand Central Station right now. You have so many entities in there. And you better burn some sage and do some clearing and some prayers. Okay. Yeah. So I have a question for you now because I know you are a trans medium. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the time you get into altered states as an artist, right? You wind up in these deep, intense conversations with people as you paint them, right? Yes. Do you? Yes. Okay. So my next question is, do you pray or do you have to put any protective energy around you? But, do you do any prep before you go into you know, um, that whole thing? You know, I'm embarrassed to admit that I usually don't. And I think a lot of that is because when I'm doing my art, it already feels like a pure energy. You know, it just feels very, very friendly, very warm, very comforting. I think if I were feeling negativity or anything frightening, I would, would do that. But usually I just sit there and connect with my subject and feel them. And if they want to talk to me, they talk to me or they at least give me their energy, which I put it into like their eyes, their expression on their face. Uh, you know, I just believe all that encodes into the artwork. Wow. I hope that answers your question. I think it's beautiful. So um, people had asked if we would throw cards. It, uh, uh, Geocosmic Valentine is saying that the director of the Human Rights Agency 
the UN Human Rights Agency resigned, saying the UN is powerless to do anything about the genocide occurring in Gaza. How will it affect the UN? Dang, what a powerful question. Question, yeah. Um, you know, uh, people, including the Arab world, feel that the Palestinians are hostages of an Al-Qaeda-like terrorist group called Hamas. And so how do we rescue the innocent Palestinians that, because they are being used, they are trapped. Yes, yes. So why don't we just, I mean, like, what is, how do we help them? I mean, like, I feel like, Yeah, I hear that buzzing noise. Where's that coming from? I don't know. I don't hear it. Wimsy, is it a strong buzzing? I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal. It's probably coming from my end. But um, I've got a lot of stuff open. That's probably why. But uh, so do you want to just see, uh, do you feel this war is going to continue on? See, here's my concern. Here's my concern. Yeah. My concern is that Putin is behind all of this. Really? And that, you feel strongly about that? You're getting that? Well, I looked at the re the review that came out with the um, who's going to win Ukraine war. And there's a lot of people that think it's going to be Russia because it's Russia is going to outspend. They're, they're going to outspend Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. So this is going to drain the U.S. because we have to go save Israel, right? We have to save Israel from Hamas yeah, and Hezbollah yeah. because now, and now the Houthi rebels are coming. So uh, Putin creates it. He's cre he he works with his allies, Iran, to create this mess, and. Um, then all the money and resources, and then we have to cut our losses in Ukraine. But I don't think yeah. that's going to happen. The cards are a new beginning, new leadership in the UN, things moving very quickly. The world will come together. The world will come together, meaning uh, like resolution, or do you think the world will come together like in war? No, the world is going to come together in peace. A lot. Of, oh, good. A lot good. of people have. Oh, how's my sound now? Um. Well, I did have. Here's a comment. Someone said you guys sound how's like you're sound underwater. In the background. Well, <laughs> you sound fine to me, but I don't know how it's sounding to people out there. Okay, I'm just trying to. Okay, I, just, I think I fixed it. Okay. Uh, I wonder if it's a restream. Uh, I think I was. It's fine. Um, okay. No, I think that what people are crying for, normal people, yeah. uh, is that ca they're calling for unity. We've got to come together. We've got to that. come together. We've got to come together. Yeah, Israelis, absolutely. Palestinians, and we've got to get rid of the psychopaths. And we've got to yeah. build a unity. Go we've got to come together. I mean, it's like everybody on both sides who are not insane. It's like the mantra, we got to come together, we got to come together, we got to mm -hmm. come together. And so uh, I believe based on the outcome is the world. It seems impossible. Pray that we come together and build a great country. Don't stop praying for a two-state solution because the only thing that happens when you do that is terrorists come in and kill the Palestinians. Pray instead for a unity government. Pray that uh yes it, temporarily israel may israel and the americans may temporarily occupy but not occupation forever occupation with intent to, to unite and liberate i mean we've got to bring everybody together and if you don't oh, yeah. want that then you don't have to live there you should be allowed to go live somewhere else but if you're going to live right. there you have to unite then we have to come together that's the only thing we have to worry about right now yeah that, i think that's a very important thing for all of us to pray for I just, you know, it goes without saying how heartbroken every one of us is when we watch the news. We it's see horrible. innocent people uh, yes. suffering. Yes, and it's terrible. Innocent people, and, in the food and the water. Yes, uh, 240 
people, 40 of them babies, taken underground. And it was from the Japalaya refugee camp. So some of them were taken underground under the Gaza Shifra hospital. And some of them were taken back to the Japalaya refugee camp. So it's very aggressive. It's like a feeling of give us our hostages. We want complete surrender. We will stop when you give us complete surrender and give us all our hostages. No, let's stop and cease fire and talk about it while we put more rockets on top of more innocent Palestinians. It's not going to save more Palestinian lives because they are, they don't care about the Palestinians. They are not pro-Palestinian. They are pro-destroy Israel. And if they got to kill some Palestinians to do it, so be it. Mm-hmm. So the cynic says, well, who cares whether we stop? So it's all about unilateral surrender and give us back the hostages. And so it's just a nice yeah. war is hell. War is hell. Yeah. True hell, true hell on earth. Yeah. On that happy note. Oh yes. <laughs> it was a light show today, you know. Uh, it was a light show, but but we did have yeah. a question about it. Um, yeah. And we we want to come together and to create a, a, a nation. Number one is safety. We're all the safety people, right? A safe nation united in democracy. And if you can't handle that, then this is not the town for you. Not at all. If you're a Huta rebel or a Hezbollah, you won't be happy here. Because we let women wear, if you don't want to cover your hair, you don't have to. If you want to listen to rock and roll, that's cool. Because that's freedom, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we support freedom. You know, I have an Iranian friend mm. for, because of a family matter. She has no choice. She has to go back to Iran oh, in three God. weeks. And she's scared out of her mind right now. And she said, even on, under the best of conditions, on the plane, before it lands, all the women have to go into the airplane bathroom, take their makeup off, their jewelry, their clothes, and they have to put on that. What, what do they call the Hijab. Hijab. Scarf, they have to put that yeah. They have to be fully prepared when the plane lands. And she said she feels like she's going back 600 years and she would not be doing this trip, but she has to because her father is ill. So she has to go back there. I have friends who are Palestinians and they're on the Palestinian side. And Uh in the 1980s, they were in jeans and T-shirts and they were living normal lives. And now they're all in hijab. And... It's like, I thought, uh, free Palestine meant, oh, they're going to be free. Not if you're a Palestinian woman. Freedom no. for who? Freedom for them? They're being beaten into submission. I've always wondered if a day is going to come when the women say enough is enough and they start. I just want everyone to be happy, more. free, and safe. And most people on both sides want that. It's like, we got to come together, folks. That's, that's my prayer. So th- I had a great time. Did you have a great time, Chuck? Great time, Wednesday. This has been a fast hour. It, I know it went too fast. So I, uh, so yep. uh, I think we should move on now to the book club. What do you say? That's right. Okay. Shift here. I gotta <laughs> ask you. Did you did you have you read it? Do you like it? Uh, do you think oh. we need to bring on Heather Hart? We need to bring Heather Hardison. Oh. Yes, I, I always have trouble pronouncing her name. So give it up, yes. everybody. Give a warm welcome to the powerful Heather Hardison. Hello, Heather. Hi, Heather. Hello, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. I can't believe you're here for Halloween. It, when you picked it for October, I said, that is perfection. This is the perfect month for it. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, you are just a wonderful writer, yes, isn't she? Heather. Congratulations on your achievement. I wish we could see you right Thank now. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I found a picture. I added my picture to it. Okay. <laughs> well, we at least have that to look for. Uh. Shall we start here? Can I, I start? Can I start the questions? Oh, I, I, I know start. that Chuck is supposed to lead the questions today, but no, I, no, I want to go please. ahead and start. Okay. Uh, and um, so I'm about two thirds of the way through the book and we know not to give the things away because I'm actually not done. But um, my first question to you, because I, I, I have a lot to say about this book, but the first thing is, is that uh, for, for the book club, who else here felt like you knew these people inside and out? And you, I know these people. It's like, I know, I know these people. 
Uh, I know Izzy. I know these people. Oh, yeah. uh, what inspired you to write this book? Um, a lot of the tarot uh, community is like built into a lot of these characters or mixture of several, like you'll see yourself, you'll see Kirsten Langston. Um, you, you see um, uh, Izzy is an actual person in my life. Uh, yeah. She is hundred percent Izzy. I, I did not change that character at all. She was my energy healer who really sparked my own spiritual awakening. And so this is a story of our time together, finding each other and healing each other. And so the main character is based on me. And then Izzy is my soul sister in this life, Stephanie Sievers. And I just knew after I met her that we had lived other lives together and we've discovered very many uh, sister lives. We're, we're, we're biological sisters and have always found each other and helped each other heal and, and find our power in this life. And she's done that for me in this incarnation. And I just knew our story had to be told. So this is really based on my own spiritual awakening that started in 2018 when I found her. And I just knew the story had to be told. And I knew, I knew that she was such a magical person that the world needed to know her. Because yes. uh, Izzy, yeah. the real life Izzy is my muse. She's my muse every single day. And her, her true magic, her healing magic is what inspires me every day to write this story and to continue on with each book in the series. I knew that had to be the case because she yeah. is so real. She yes. So real. She, she's she's amazing. amazing. I, I could tell your lead character was based on yourself. Yes. Am I, <laughs> am I, that was very clear to me. You know, I love this, you know, I love this myself. You know, I, Whimsy and I, our viewers, I think we're all on the same page here. I, I'm always intrigued by the mystic mm -hmm. tarot cards, oracle cards, uh, pendulum, astrology. Yeah. I even loved a part where you mentioned being sensitive to the energy of the moon without yeah. even having to know if the moon was full <laughs> or if it was new or whatever. You just intuitively know that in your body, almost like a clock or yes. a calendar. Um, you know, um, you know, I know you've mentioned this already, but just could you describe your writing process, like your routines and rituals yes, to do yes. that? Yes, I use tarot a lot as a writing tool. I, I throw I spreads. Yes, uh, I even take the um, archetypes in the cards, and I will. Oh, yes, I wanted to ask about the yeah, yes. I, I use them as character profiles. And so I will pull out the cards. The Queen of Wands is very important yes. to the story. <laughs> yes, I yeah. know that. <laughs> In real life, I'm a Capricorn just like um, Alexandra. So oh. I am the Queen of Pentacles. Oh, but right. my weakness is the Queen of Wands. I need to call in her power to conquer my fears. So she has always flown out of sure. the deck every single time when I first laid my hands on the deck. The Queen of Wands always flew out for me. She is my stalker card. And it's because that is the energy I have to embody in this life. I am mm -hmm. the queen of pentacles. I'm very grounded. I'm very practical. And I have to step into my power, use my voice, get, you know, kind of become comfortable being the center of attention, which I hate. I'm just like Alexandra. I hate it. Um, but the queen of wands is always there to remind me that I have to step into that energy that doesn't feel comfortable in order to conquer yeah. these fears. And it is the past witch wound that is my biggest fear that I have to conquer in this life. Um, and so telling the story is part of that, is part of that healing because um, there are the her scenes that I write, which are my favorite, are the dream sequences where we see her past lives. Yeah. Um, they're very detailed because those are my actual past incarnations that I have tapped back into. And so they can be very visceral. Um, it's very hard to write them and to reread them, but it also is healing in the same um, token because I am giving those incarnations their power back um, after oh. script from them and I'm giving them that voice again. So it's been really healing to my throat chakra. <laughs> Yeah, I know that's why I resonated with your book, because mm -hmm. I'm in that position of having to step into my power right now, yes. such as doing this show right now, doing these videos. I'm a Cancer. You're a Capricorn. I get along very well with Capricorns because, you know, we, you know, we're the polarities. Mm -hmm. We each kind of things to each other. And I also have a Capricorn natal moon. Oh, yes. So I okay. read to what you're saying. Yes. But, you know, it's interesting because I have a good friend who's a Capricorn. It feels like you. They don't want to be in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. 
but yet that person is one of the most industrious oh, people. Wow, yeah. We want our life. we want our work to shine. So it's our work yes. and our product and, and what and what we materialize into the world. We manifest a lot of things and, and bring them into existence. But we want that to shine instead of, you know, ourselves or our personality. Or yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Well, the other thing is, is that the Queen of Pentacles is often used as the FBI's card because she is hidden. You don't know mm -hmm. what she's up to. And the FBI is female, right? Like an institution, a boat or something is female. So when you're doing, when I'm ever doing, trying to access information, use we use HCRV quick technique. We use the cards, right? We train, that's actually seventh, seventh week people get trained in that. And um, I think of the queen of pentacles as she knows her business, but nobody else knows her business. And she, you know, Merrick Garland is, has that energy. They, they, get, they keep their head down, they do their work. They don't, they're not frivolous with their money. They're grounded, but you all, a lot of the time, you just honestly don't know what the hell's going on with them. Yes. We're very level-headed. We, we're all about the work. We think of work 24 seven. It's all about what we're here to complete. You know, we're really good about our life mission because we're going to stick to it. And that's all we think about. <laughs> oh yeah. That, that's a typical Capricorn. It's one of the qualities I admire and I'm aspiring to be more like that actually. So I think I picked that up in your book. Uh, let me ask you, if I may, I didn't mean, I hope I'm not interrupting whimsy here. What was the most challenging part of writing your book? Ooh, um, publishing it because um, oh, writing, yeah. writing is very, uh, I've always written like poetry and things like that. Um, and, I've, and I've written a lot of articles for, you know, I'm a psychologist. So I've, I've written a yes. ton of, you know, journal articles. So writing was the easy part for me. Uh, publishing it and putting my name to this because I have a very religious family. I live in the South. I'm in the Bible belt down here. Mm -hmm. I really oh. feared, you know, um, being connected to the terror because anybody that reads the book is going to know it's me. I mean, if you know my personality, you're going to know, Hey, right. 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 And hey I'm, I'm, I'm from a little town of Virginia. Yes, I know what you're so talking you know, about. Yes. And so I have done writing and I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. The writing part, is easy and fun it's the actual nuts and bolts of trying to get it published yes. and all the politics and everything so it's a, that's a very interesting answer you gave you know i i was expecting you to have maybe hit some challenges or roadblocks in this book but it mm -hmm. sounds to me like it just flowed to you it flowed through me my energy healer says that i tap into the akashic records when i write and i'm actually writing our incarnations because she can kind of she can tap in and tell me our our, our past uh, lives uh, together. Like the tsunami life was the first life that she found of mine, and it was a very very traumatic life for me to relive. Because drowning is one of the one of the um, tragic deaths that I've had over and over and over again. So me water. too. See, and I have a phobia of water, and never understood why I had it because uh, I've had nothing in this life has happened to have created a yeah. don't go to iceland that's where you, did you hear about how they executed witches and women in iceland oh, no i haven't was they, that the dunking in the water you, they put you in a sack they tie you and then oh, you can go to the river where it happens and then mm -hmm. there's a rope and then they pull you and then you fall into the river. And then as they slowly pull the rope to the other side of the river, which takes about five minutes, by the time they, they pull you up, you're already dead. Wow. Oh, and that God. is, and it's icy cold water. Wow. It's like you put your hands in it and it's frozen. And when I went to Iceland, they brought us to where they killed the women. And it's just like, wow. what a horrific death. You know, oh, and, 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 to, to know this is coming and not be able to stop it and to see that water and just like, and they did the same thing throughout medieval Europe, just pulling these, you know, it goes back to Matthew Perry dying in the water and and the queen of the witches, ironically enough, in the Ifa tradition was the queen of wands, the fire queen who is Oshun. And yeah. she was also the protector of the sweet water. So it's so bizarre that how they would take them down was to take them into the water, which is the home of the Queen of the Witches. So it's bizarro. Yes. And I've always yeah. had that phobia. So to, to realize that what it's connected to, that's been healing in a way because I can kind of try to gain power back from that. But it's, exactly. it's still frightening to be anywhere near a body of water mm -hmm. for me. I think just knowledge in itself is empowering. I, you know, the, I, that's why I love past life research. It's given me a lot of answers. It explains my sister. 
something like that happen. You know, my sister once jokingly said to a, a psychic, why do I hate working so much? I just want to rest. I hate my job. I hate working. I just want to retire. And uh, the psychic did a regression and saw a lifetime where my sister was like a a slave working in rice paddy fields, being forced to work day and night, harvesting rice. And my sister said, well, no wonder I hate rice. So much. <laughs> but that's where it came from, yeah. the hatred of working yeah. I think, and the need yeah. to just rest. We carry yeah. so much over from other lives that we don't realize, like it, it, interest, but also fears and it bodily memories. Like it will live in the body so you can have a health you know, conditions. I have migraines, neck knots, a lot of that we've traced back to yes. past lives that I've carried over that energy yes. and it sits in there until you kind of release it and heal it. Yeah. You had oh horrible God. lifetimes. I just got to go on record saying <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of these are really pretty traumatic just to, yeah. but, you know, some of them are also lifetimes that I remember. Like I remember mm -hmm. being in the insane asylum in England mm -hmm. and you know what they used to do in Britain? They used to to entertain people in Britain. They would take people from the insane asylum who were disobedient women, by the way, and they would take them out into a cage in the park, cages in the parks, and you would be able to go and look at the bedlam patients. Oh, and they'd wow. be sitting in the cage and you'd throw rocks and giggle. Oh, ah, Dolly, um, look at the one over there drooling. The freak. And the oh, and the know. British aristocracy would go through the park and they would look at the crazies. And I have a memory of being in that box so and wow. seeing people I knew when I was a wealthy aristocrat. I was a wealthy aristocrat that got into psychics, got into psychic stuff. Mm -hmm. and I started calling people out on stuff. But what guys would do is my wife is crazy. They'd spend the dowry on the mistress and send her. And I've had the same karma in this lifetime, right? You know my story with oh, yes, and, and yes. sexism and all that. But I have a distinct memory of being in that cage and seeing my aristocratic brother and saying, are you going to get me out of here? And him saying, oh, no, but look, I wanted you to meet my fiance. Yes, we're going to be spending no dowry. Like uh, I actually have a memory of that as clear as day. And I, he, he became my boy, a boyfriend of mine in this lifetime. And I still am pissed at him about it. Yes. <laughs> that carries he has, over to him. He has met, and we, he has apologized a million times. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, sister. Like it's not even a romantic thing anymore. You are. You left me there. Oh, <laughs> you know, just the fact that you can even laugh a little bit right now you know that in itself is healing you know I, I think humiliation is the worst thing you can ever do to anybody i really just think is. the thought of people put in cages like that well um, you kind of had a, a thing like that come up with you right you had yes. some stuff right can you talk about that heather the character with the, in with, with the institution yeah yes, you talk yes. About um yes it was actually uh, it was a transgender life and um i was uh about 13 years old and my father at that time, it was in Eastern uh, Europe, and he was um, a politician. And so they did just felt like their reputation would have been ruined had it come out that uh, I was, uh, they, they thought I was a male, but I was expressing myself as a female in that life. And they put me in an institution for it. And I died in that institution after a lobotomy because the doctor had said that um, the lobotomy would cure me. And so I never left the institution. I died a very early uh, death in, in, in that institution, but I was there years before just languishing in this cell. Um, oh. And that is one of the lives that really, it, it, it's resonated with me throughout this whole life because I've had things like that happen in, in, in my life where, you know, my, I, I was institutionalized for anorexia when I was 12 years old. And while it wasn't as traumatic as that was, it, it kind of was because it was bringing that back up again. It was my parents putting me away again and saying, they'll deal with you. And I was there for three months when I was 12 years old. And it was just, it, it's so crazy, the parallels in our life. So when that was discovered a few years ago, um, I instantly knew that, that I was reliving that part of my life out again. Um, and but I turned it into my power in this life because I became a psychologist 
And it's because I was, I got to see what an institution looked like from, you know, the inside. I oh, was wow. like, this every yeah. day. I was in group therapy. And I just thought at that, at 12 years old, I thought, this is what I'm going to do when I grow up. I'm going to help so people. Nice. Yeah. And I'm going to be an emp empathic, you know, uh, counselor. I'm going to understand what it's like to be on the other side of it. And I'm going to, you know, lead with my heart and show compassion. So I turned that pain into something here yeah. in this life. Well, well, you found the gold and you found the gift. Thank you. I yeah. Think. Thank you so much for writing it. And I got to say the last thing I would say before closing today is that I felt like you were the classic heart centered remote viewer that winds up in an MK ultra experiment in the sense yeah. that, you know, it was like, okay, this is why I teach HCRV. Yeah. She, this is my student population. It's like, well, uh, there's no easy training to be a trans medium, is there? There's no easy train. We got to go through the fire. Yep. You know? yes. Yeah. Uh, and we bitch and we yell about that early training, that early trauma, the stuff that Alexandra goes through. The, just the fact that she finds her tribe again, in a sense. Yes. Yes. Know? Yes. Um, and and that's kind of what we all go through. We we. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to do this work. And so I thank you very much for writing this. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just wrote the book I needed to write that I wanted to read. And it's it, it was really to heal myself. And if it's helping other people, I mean, that is just puts me over the moon. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, Heather, if I may ask you quickly, because someone asked this, are you, do you have plans to do an audiobook version? Uh, I haven't thought of it yet. Um, I've had several yeah. people here ask that. Okay. You might want to consider okay. it. I will down, your word down out. the road right now. I'm I'm writing book four, and then I want because I'm finishing up the um, um, timeline of the modern where we're in Alexandra's I, incarnation. But I want to write. I know books. that right. I know that Chuck Dransfield, as an actor, has done voiceover, and um, I know that other people have talked about you uh, doing readings. Maybe you'll be the person to read her book. But, I would be. Um, yeah, it. so maybe you guys can. Connect. If you don't want to do it yourself. Uh, if you are look, if you do need a professional uh, actor, we do need to close, you guys. Thank you so much again, and thank you to Joel Tilson, our floor director, Debbie Brady, cre creative consultant for the show, and um, uh, uh, manager for the amazing Chuck. It looks like his show will be stud starting. If you'd like to go. Well, it's going to be starting at 7.30 instead of 7. I just saw a notice here from my <laughs> man, Debbie, because we ran a little long. So she's moving up to 7.30, 10.30 um, East Coast. All right. We will be there. Please stay, Heather, uh, in your seat. Don't go anywhere. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Thank we'll you, see everyone. you next time. Be kind to all so that all will be kind to you, too. We are out of here. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate it. We had a great time. Everyone. Thank you. Happy Halloween, everyone. Bye. Happy Halloween.